Good evening and welcome to our prayer meeting tonight here at Faith Bible Church of San Francisco. Um, thank and praise the Lord for the another day he's added to our lives and also for bringing us here uh, for prayer meeting. Pray that you would uh, join us as we sing a hymn, No One Ever Cared For Me Like Jesus. to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true, I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. for us like Jesus we could always look up to him and count on him with his unfailing and unconditional love and <clears throat> okay good evening everyone here we are again <clears throat> praising the Lord for this day that we can uh, meditate on his word even for a brief moment that uh, we can celebrate His goodness, His mercy, and His grace that has been shared to all His people. And we'll continue our, uh, our lesson from last week that uh, from First Peter 1 to 1 to 9 right now. We've discussed verses so uh, uh, one and two, and then we'll be going three to nine for tonight. 
And before that, we'll look to the Lord in prayer and uh, bless us with his word. Dear hey God, Heavenly Father, we thank you again for tonight that uh, we can celebrate your goodness, that uh, we can meditate on your word, and every word that comes up out of my mouth will be only those words that you want me to express of your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Just bless each one who will be with us tonight and those who are in need of your help, especially Pastor Wallow is your God in the group. Just be with them and those who are in, in sickness, who needs your help, your healing power, guide them, O oh God. And to you, I commit my life tonight, O oh God. That you will be exalted. You will be praised in all everything that I say. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Okay, let's look at the uh, uh, what is that? First Peter. Uh, First Peter, the elect, our greater hope, our responsibility as an elect. Uh, that's what uh, we started last week. And we'll be just continuing, like I said, from uh, our text last week, that as being an elect or chosen, it comes with a duty and responsibility. And uh, we have discussed some of it uh, last time, that uh, number one, we have to love God. Uh, it says in Deuteronomy 6, 5, to love God with all our strength, mind, body, and soul. In simple terms, it says, we have to love God with everything we have. Give him the best of everything. Because he is giving to us the best. He knows what is best for us. And he wants us to love him. Because the love, he is the God of love. And everything that we have comes from him. And also, uh, one of our duties is to be holy. For God is a holy God. And he desires that all his children may be holy as well. And Leviticus 11, 44 says, I am the Lord, the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. And uh, Leviticus 20 Verse 7, as, as well as Ephesians 1 and 4. For he chose us before the foundation, before the creation of the world, to be holy and blameless in his sight, in love. He wants us, he is a holy God, and he wants us as well to be holy. That's why he chooses each one of us. And to be blameless, righteous in his sight because of his love for us. And it will be accomplished and have been accomplished through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And another thing is we have to love, serve, and pray for one another, for one another. That being a John 13, 35, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Loving one another, serving one another, and praying for another. Helping each other as children of God. And this is, it says, all men know that you are my disciples. Tayo ay makanya mag disipulo kung tayo ay sumusunod pag-ibig sa bawat isa. And not only that, that not to love God, to be holy, to love one another, 
but also to bear proof or fruits because we are ambassador of Christ for the lost soul. Second Corinthians 5.20 he says, Now then you are ambassadors of Christ. Ephesians 6.20 For which I am an ambassador in bonds. Paul is the one speaking there. That therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We have to speak boldly. It means we have to speak out of our love, out of our of what the Lord is telling us to do. And Hebrew 13, 15 and 16 said, Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Fruit of lips that confess his name and do not forget to do good to share within others for such sacrifices, God is as well placed. See, if we speak about the love, about the gospel of Jesus Christ, about his sacrifice, at nagbubunga ito, it bear fruit because of what we are telling them. God will be pleased. He says sacrifices for God. Not a sacrifice, not, not, not the same sacrifice they have been doing in the Old Testament. But sacrifices our time, our resources for the love of God. It's a different actual sacrifice, but it is ourself, ourself itself, and God will be pleased. I said there are more duties that we have to accomplish as an elect or being chosen by God. <clears throat> Through his infinite knowledge of the future, each man lives and having a personal relationship with them. The elect as a per should have a personal relationship with them. The Holy Spirit made us true holy, made us holy through the process of sanctification, that this is uh, and verse 2, sanctification, the blood, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are cleansed from all our sins, past, and to the future to come. As I said last week, that uh, the three persons of the Trinity were all present. God the Father, God the Son, Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. They are all in union, in unison, in picking each one to be chosen, elected, or selected. We are really blessed as children of God, as called Christians, that we have been chosen. To be his children and has given us the greater hope of all. But like I said, it's not, uh, it's not a, a, it's not like a permit just to sit down and relax. It is a duty. that we have to offer to the Lord. Now we go to the verses 3 and 5 of our text, First Peter 1, 3 to 5. It says, Praise be to God, or blessed be God, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to the inheritance that can never spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming salvation that is ready 
to be revealed in the last time. The praise be to God, the Father. By, by before in the Old Testament, the Father God, ang kanilang ginagamit lagi. Even the Jews right now, they're still using Father God because Jesus Christ then is not present. They don't know him yet uh, on the Old Testament. But for us right now, he's now our mediator. Jesus Christ is in the New Testament and he is being revealed in us through the great mercy of God. And through Christ Jesus, we have been given a new birth. New birth with a living hope. Sa gawain ng ating Pahina sa Kristo, sa pag-ibig ng Diyos, He gave His only begotten Son to give us a new birth. A new birth with a living hope to be with him eternally in the future to come. Because of what Christ has did for us. He suffered, humiliated, and even died on the cross. But on the third day, he rose again. The promise that is given to us, inheritance, cannot be spoiled, cannot fade away, Sabe. It is kept in heaven for you and me. It has been shielded by God's power. Now it's up to us. For being chosen, we have an obligation as well, especially to our loved ones who are lost, to share that great salvation, that great gift of eternal life for them. He said, God the Father, the Father of Jesus Christ. Again, in verse 2, he is the author of our salvation. That was a Hebrews 12 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for a joy set before him endured the cross, scorning the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, because of God's infinite knowledge, because of God's infinite love, the all knowing God, the omnipotent God, Omnipresent, omniscient God, He has chosen each one of us. He knows who we can use. He knows who can be of service to Him. That's why you and I, as believers, have been really blessed by being chosen by God. Jesus did everything only through his mercy and grace that we were born again. There is a new stage. Being born again is a new stage in our life that guarantees the believer of a sure hope that will certainly be accomplished. And being accomplished now and into the future. Sabe, a promise that will never fade away and is guaranteed. And that is our salvation. That is a duty. That is what the word of the Lord is saying, telling us. I don't want to miss this one. Let's go back to verse 2 where it says, a sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. It is important. I don't want to miss this. The sprinkled blood of Jesus Christ assures the New Testament believers of four benefits. 
apat na bagay. It's been promised to all believers by Jesus Christ himself. Sabi sa number one, that we are justified. Romans 5, 9, and 10 says, Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? For if then we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? What Christ did on the cross, he is in a Sabbath, the sacrifice, sacrificing his own life, his holy life, to give us the greatest hope we can possess. That is eternal life again. We have been justified. Um, I like to emphasize on this Romans 5 and 9, 5, 9 and 10. That says, we, have, we can see that in these four verses, 9, 10, 15, and 7. Let me read 15 and 17. Right. Okay, but not at the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one man, many died, many died, many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace which is by one man, Jesus Christ, have abounded unto many. And 17, for if by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. You can see on these four verses, 5, 10, 14, uh, 15, and 17. The emphasis lies on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Nine. Justified by his blood. See that? Justified by his blood. We were saved to him. And then, see, that's number one. And then, said, the death of his son, the death of Jesus Christ, we were reconciled and saved. And that the death, kalagaan ng kamatay ng ating Panis sa Kristo. And 17, death reigned by one man. Much more, they received abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness. That's 17. And 15, I forgot. this 15. Not as the offense also is the free gift, for if through the offense of many, many be dead, much more of God. He gave a gift of eternal life. See, on those four verses, the emphasis is on the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Pinakikilala sa atin ang kalagahan, ang buhay ng ating panasokito na dahil sa kanyang sacrifice, sa kanyang pagbibigay ng kanyang sariling buhay, tayo ay nagkaroon ng we were given the greatest hope we can possess. That is our eternal life. We have been justified, service. We have been cleansed. We had been washed. Not later. Not tomorrow. But now. Now. Ngayon. Upon acceptance. See? What's more than them being now justified. Today. If you accept the Jesus Christ. Today. You will be redeemed. You will be cleansed. Not tomorrow, but now. 
a promise assurance of salvation. Now, one, that we are being justified. Two, that we have the seal of the Holy Spirit, that guarantee of our salvation. Can I say Second Corinthians 1, 21 to 22. Now he who established us with, with you in Christ and had anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given the earnest spirit of our hearts. Okay, the two persons of the Trinity is there. Now he who established us with Christ and had anointed us, who anointed us? Christ himself. God. Even the Holy Spirit is here. Because there's Christ who anointed that. God is present to God and who has sealed us and given us the spirit of our heart. The sealing of the Holy Spirit. The three person of the Trinity was always present. When he chose us, when he saved us, his presence as well. Even now, sabi ngayon, they have been sealed. You can see, there's all the significance of the sealing of this Holy Spirit. There's three significant factors. One, it indicates ownership. We are owned. Meron na tayong sealed. We have been guaranteed. We are owned by the Lord. And the sealing of this Holy Spirit indicates genuineness. Genuine ang kanyang pagpapatawad sa atin. Genuine ang pagtawad na sa atin. Walang fake. All is true. And three, to preserve and keep safe. It says in Ephesians 4.30. Let me read in that. Ephesians 4. Okay. Okay. Ephesians 4, okay, yes, is that the wrong one? 430, yeah. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, wherein ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. See, we have, we're not supposed to grieve the Holy Spirit that is in us. What is the meaning of grieving the Holy Spirit? Kung hindi natin sinusunod kung ano yung gusto sa atin ng Panginoon na gawin, lalo sa araw-araw na ating pamumuhay, ating pagmulat sa ating mga mata, ang ating mga mata, huwag natin kalimutan ang ating katungkulan pagkat ang Panginoon ay naghihintay sa atin sa araw-araw natin Pag-gising, he's waiting for us to have a relationship with him, to our meditation, through reading of his word, to our prayers. He, he needs to hear from us. And 2 Timothy 2.19 says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God is standard sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his, and everyone that nameth the name of Jesus Christ, of Christ name of Christ, depart from iniquity. So we have been, we have been preserved and kept safe. 
ที่จะเล็ด everyone that name it the name of Christ depart from iniquity เพลงลุงอายุตายอยู่ทำอะไรนั่นแล้วที่นั่งกีตาร์ชัดที่ตะลึกนั่น but there are times that we can't uh, hindi yung like it can't find the word eh parang hindi si nasa ja pero if we know it is sin the Holy Spirit will tell us sa ating mga paglakad sa ating pananalita and one more one more verse Revela Revelation seven two and three and I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God And he cried with a loud voice of the four angels. Another one. Mm, I, I didn't get it right. Okay. We have been preserved and been kept safe. The Holy Spirit, it indicates ownership, indicates genuineness, And the Holy Spirit preserve and keep us safe. The Holy Spirit is the surety and the security of all that is to follow in the final salvation of the of the believers. We can read that in Romans eight nine, eight. Let's just read the one verse, so you can just take a. Second Corinthians five this is much closer. Second Corinthians five five says, "Now he that hath wrote us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given the earnest of the Spirit." We have been made right with God. Has given us the spirit that we can live on in our life, in this life. Nandi tay magkamali sa ati mga gawain. Number uh, number one, it says. That's one thing to get lost. That the seal of the spirit, the seal. Uh, the three factors indicate ownership, genuine. Indicate genuineness and to preserve us. And the third one. Oh no, we are. Let me go back again. They say that the promise to all believers, but just can said that we are justified. And that's number one, that we are justified, and then we are sealed. By the Holy Spirit, and number three, that we are clean from all sins. First John, one seven says, "But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin." Lahat ng kasalanan. But there's a, there's a catch in there. If we walk in the light, are we walking in the light? Are we following his footsteps? Because if you are walking in the light, he he has the reflection. Na kita yung anino ng panginoon sa atin sa ating mga paglakad. Sino man ang ating kasama? Wherever we are, by the way we talk, the way we say things, they will see God's goodness in our life. But there is an assurance. Yes, we can make mistakes. He is always there. 
Christ is always there to forgive us our sins. If we confess, and then confess, kalimutan na natin, sabihin natin ang ating kasalanan, and turn around from it 360 degrees. Turn around from all the sins. And number four, not only we have justified, we have sealed, and we have cleansed from all unrighteousness, from all our sin. Number four, that we are admitted into the citizenship of heaven. And Hebrew 10, 19 says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus Christ, We have the confidence to enter the most. Who, what is that most holy place? Being with her in heaven with him. Praising him, thanking him for what he has done for us. That is the holy place. Being with a God who is holy. In Hebrew 12, 28. Therefore we are receiving a kingdom then it cannot be shaken. Let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. We will be, you see, it repeated again, the most holy place, a kingdom na hindi mabubuag, na hindi maano ng earthquake, gano'n mo kalakas. Because in that place, the God who, who we worship is our light. He's there residing on his throne with his angels, with Jesus, and all the saints. That are we ready to receive that? So we said, please transit him. But our citizenship is in heaven. We're just passing through this earth, remember. So we still have a duty, remember again, that duty that being elect. Let's not be contented, like I said, of what we have right now. We have the duty to share this word. And verses six and nine of First Peter, you can see four things first Peter oh, come on. let me read verses six to nine wherein ye greatly rejoice you see the word rejoice greatly rejoice though now for a season if need be, ye are in heaviness. There is trials through manifold temptation. And number seven, verse seven, that the trial of your faith, the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. Number one, there's a rejoice, there is great rejoicing. Two, there's a trial of our faith. And verse eight, seven, whom having not seen, ye love, having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, ye see him not, yet believing, we rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Having not seen him, the increasing love of him and for receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, the assurance of our faith. So there are four things. Verse 6 says, great rejoicing because of what the Lord has done in our life. Remember, we have been blessed. So we have to rejoice what God, what the Lord has given to us. Sabi nga sa James, 
James 1. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall, fall into diverse temptation. When you fall into diverse temptation. Even in Matthew 5, 12, there is a great reward waiting for us if we endure the trials. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Knowing this, that the trial of your faith work in patience. That's number two. The great we have the, the great rejoicing, and seven it says the trial of our faith. As continue in James one, it says, knowing this, that the trial of your faith work at patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect. And entire, one thing, nothing. There is a persistence of doing good. Not doing good, but there's a, a continual changing of our life into a better, mature Christian. And what it says on, there is a reward of our faith. There is a reward. I say you, the trials of our faith, this is only temporary, remember. This is only temporary, but what we are suffering right now, compared to what glorious days, everlasting life. What we're suffering now is only temporary. But in Romans 2, 7 says, To them who by patient, continual, in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. If we continue to be good, good in a sense, of doing what the Lord wants us to do. Be obedient to the Lord. Because every day he has something for us to do. That is a complete change. Not complete, actually. It's not like a perfect. That is changing in our life every day. And that is the reward of our faith. And number four, and verse eight, says the increasing faith says, bear, whom having not seen, oh, the increasing love of him, of whom having not seen, he loved. We are blessed because we haven't seen him, but yet we believe. We have the faith, the assurance that he is a true God who keeps on blessing us. And we mga, this love for us is giving us everything that we need. So we can come to Him. We can uh, rely on His power. Remember that everything that we have, that we possess, comes from Him. That's why we have to increase our love for Him every day. We are blessed, meron tayo na sisulungan. Look at that. Do we really love God? Totoo ba ang ating pag-ibig sa ating Diyos? Ito po po masakit. 1 John 4.20 If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath sent, how can we love God? He loved God whom he hath not sent.
o sa ating mga kapatid. Hindi lamang kung flesh, fleshly brother, tunay na kapatid, kundi kapatiran sa iglesia. Ganon natin kamahal ang pag-ibig ng ating kapatiran. Ganon natin kamahal ang pagsiservisyo sa Panginoon. Kung hanggang ngayon ay meron pa rin tayong alitan, meron pa rin natatagong mga samaan ng loob. Ang iba pa sabi, oh, pinatawad ko na yan. Bahala na ang pakinan sa kanila. Ganun po ba? Ay kung sabihin na sa atin ng Panginoon, ang pinatawad ko na, bahala na sila kung anong gusto nilang gawin. Yun po kaya sabihin sa atin ng Panginoon, pinatawad ko na yan, bahala ka na sa buhay mo. Madalas narinig natin niya sa ating mga kapatiran. It's not a genuine forgiveness. So if we love him, we have to love our enemies. Yun pa nga, yun. Masakit ko yun eh. Yun po ba? Masakit yun. Sabihin na paano natin maba ang kapatid na nakita natin yung mga kaaway natin hindi natin mapatawad. How could we have that increasing love of Him? Sabi sa John, John 20, 29. And Jesus said to him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet they believe. We are really blessed. We haven't seen him, but through his words, through his words, through his words, nakakita natin, nanadama natin ang Panginoon, ang kanyang pag-ibig sa atin. Pero kung kulang tayo sa pagsasaliksig, ang kanyang salita, paano natin masasabi that we are increasing in loving Him. Okay. And verse 9, it says, the first Peter, I'll listen at the last, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. The assurance of our faith, the promise eternal life. Yan ang sinasabi po sa apat na verses na yun. There is a great rejoicing because whatever we do, we gave him glory. Whatever we do, you are greatly rewarded. Ano man trial sa ating harapin sa araw-araw. Tipin natin, sa puso natin, lahat ng ito ay temporary. But we're looking for it beyond. And verse 8 says, the increasing love of Him. Patuloy na pag-ibig na lumalago sa ating pag-ibig sa Panginoon. Mas mabat hindi natin siya nakikita. Nadadama natin ang ating fellowship sa Kanya. Doon tayo sumusunod sa pagsasaliksik ng ang salita. There's increasing maturity of love. Yung step by step. And then the assurance of our faith is our eternal salvation for them. Our present Salvation brings believers in all kinds of early trials. Our salvation brings believers in all kinds of earthly trials, but put it into heart that they are only temporary. True faith cannot be destroyed. 
though God is in the process of refining through our trials. Ginagawa ng Panginoon na tayo maging genuine sa ating pag-ibig sa Kanya, sa ating gawain sa Kanya. That she is the one being exalted, not ourselves. I'll repeat in James 1. In James 1 to 4. And verse 12. And said, Uh, start with two. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith work it patience. But let patience have perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, one thing, nothing. Kailangan tayo magpagpasensya. Sapagat ang ating Diyos ay puno ng pasensya. na hanggang ngayon nagpapasensya pa rin tayo siya sa ating mga pagkukulang sa ating mga kasalanan. But, sabi, entirely we should and should not want anything that is against his will. And on verse 12 says, Blessed is the man that endure temptation for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord had promised to them that love him. Blessed are those who wait upon the Lord, who endures temptations. I said, consider it joy, my friend, my brother. Manuman trials and tomorrow things are happening. Let's count it as a joy. Trials nagbaybigay ng ng pagsu ng kaganapan ng atin pananampalataya sa Dios. Trials that makes us stronger to be closer to God. Trials that. Uh, na ating pagkikipagnig sa Kanya ay tunay. There is genuineness in our relationship with the Lord. Naging matatag ang ating pananampalataya. Kasi ang, ang pananampalataya ang siyang nag, nagbibigay sa atin ng kalakasan. Pananampalataya na 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 siya ang gumagawa sa atin. Sabi nga sa Hebrew 11, 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to please God. So as an elect, as an elect or chosen people of God, we have a task to follow, and these duties will result in an everlasting joy result in an everlasting joy of serving God and others that will ultimately give glory to God who promises us, us everlasting life and a crown or crowns that represent to Him. He promises us everlasting life. At sana, ano man ang ating skill or duty na pinakalab sa atin ng Panginoon ay atin magampanan. Sabi nga dito siya aking biyabas at Charles Pinzel na sabi sa buhay si Joseph yung kaya muli yung makanig ang kanyang, mga, ang kanyang pamilya The faith-filled 
faith-filled life means all the difference in how we view everything around us. It affects our attitudes toward people, toward location, toward situation, toward circumstances, toward ourselves. Only then do our feet become swift to do what is right. You say you want to be considered great someday. It's the secret. Walk by faith. Trusting God to renew your attitude. Trusting God to renew our way of life. You have to trust Him. We have to be able to live by faith. To see God's plan in our life. We must be able to abide by faith. Not only to see God, you have to sense God. We have to accept Him, whatever is planned for us. And we have to be able, able, able to walk by faith. If He is with us every day in our life. If we are still living in a, in a life that is not under His guidance, let us walk, let us change. Because you can feel right now the situation around us. Like I said before, we have the preview of what's going on of the coming future. They might not be around when these things happen. But we have the assurance that we will be with him when the designated come. The designated day has come for us. Let us be ready to get, to get that greater hope that is promised for us. Hope of eternal life. And we know how to accomplish as a chosen vessel, the children of God, we're just passing through here. Continue to serve God to our brethren, to our church, the needs of our pastors, the needs of our missionaries, the needs of our other people. Only then will God be placed. Only then that we can glorify God because we have a God. A God of love. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And let us pray. We got Heavenly Father, we thank you again for tonight. We saw your goodness as a chosen people as an elect that we have a duty to serve you, O God. Not only to be contented what we we attain through your mercy and through your grace that we have eternal life already but we have a duty and a responsibility to share your word. The great gospel of salvation to everyone who is lost. Thank you, Father God, for your word. You truly live a life that is according to your plan and according to your will. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.